toll uh, uh, my file structure there, uh, where all my, my models are, just so I have more space. Um, so I'm going to make sure I'm in the form environment, which is up here. First, I got to be in the design main design environment, and now into the form uh, environment. And I'm going to make the dumpling first with one of those quad balls again. So I'm going to choose quad ball. And the first thing I got to do is uh, choose the plane, which is the ground plane. And then I'm going to start in the center and drag out, um, what did I just say? This was two inches, right? Two. And say OK. And then I'm going to go into my select menu and make sure that my select through is on, which is that top one. And the, the second one down here, it says select all. If I select that, it gets rid of all of them. This makes it really quick to say, I just want to select my curves, or I just want to select T-spline bodies, or what these are, and T-spline edges. This is an edge. So I can't, oh, I got two things. Uh, so I can select the edges, but I can't select the little uh, points in between, because that's not chosen. So I can do faces, which are the actual, uh, I think of it as a piece of paper or whatever, and the vertices, are the little points in the corners between all the um, edges. So, uh, but mostly what I want to do is I want to make sure select through is on. And all this other stuff doesn't matter right now because I'm in the, the um, mesh, I mean, sorry, the, the form environment. So it's uh, none of those other ones are needed. So I'll just get out of there. And now, again, if I select to the right, I can select. Uh, things that I've contained, and if I select uh, to the left, then it, it grabs anything I'm touching. So I've got that whole chunk selected. So I'm only selecting the bottom because this thing is kind of round on the top and flat on the bottom. And I'm going to right click to edit form, and then grab either one of these little top um, bars in this triad thing. Uh, so this one, or if I rotate around, this one will do the exact same thing because I'm only squishing up in one dimension. So I'll grab this one and whoops. And a lot of times you can go, go both ways to see what's happening. And it has a little bit of round on the bottom. So does that look pretty good? Close enough? We'll say, OK. Now we got our basic little kind of dumpling shape. <laughs> and there's some little detail on the top I could get into, but um, this doesn't have enough information on this. This is a very simple. So the more simple you make your, your, um, your form, the better off, the more smooth it will be. But if you want detail and texture, you've got to add more information. So we'll do that as a secondary operation, because I really want to build this spoon first. So I've got this little uh, quad ball. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a sneaky little thing and just grab the bottom. Um, and let's do this, actually. I'm just going to grab these bottom four. <clears throat> and if I hold down the shift um, and the arrow up key, it's going to jump out to the next uh, level of uh, faces from those ones that I've already selected. So I've got the whole bottom, right? And now I'm going to go over and I'm going to say copy that uh, with the right click and then choose copy and then right click and paste. And what that did is it gave me a new little, sh I already squished that, so this should more or less fit in that same form. And I'll just say, OK. Um, I'm going to grab the top edge. You can see it's a little different. So I'm going to pull that up just a smidgen. Say OK. Now, in the hierarchy, now I do have some bodies. So I can click on the little arrow and open this up. I've got body one, which is dumpling. I could turn that off. And now this bottom one is just going to be the spoon. So like I said, I want to I want to start with a little bit more of an edge. So I'm going to right click, edit form. And now I'm going to hold down um, option and drag up a little bit more uh, wall here. But I don't want this that tall. And I do want it to kind of widen out. So it's still selected. It's highlighted. And I'm going to grab that little central um, uh, resizer and push this out a little bit so it goes um, it gives me a little more room so the dumpling is not a perfect fit. I just want it to nestle in there. Okay, so that's the little half of the dish. And I'm going to look at this thing, and I've got these kind of four quadrants. And if I uh, click on my little square over the top, I'll get a perfect view. And I'm going to take two of these 
Actually, first I'll, I'll duplicate this too. So I'm double click on it, it selects the whole thing. I'm gonna go back and do this copy and paste, but there's a shortcut is I'm gonna go over and say move and copy, choose the copy, and then before I unselect it, move it over. And I should have some measurements total, but I'm just gonna eyeball this, so. All right. So this is gonna be kind of the two halves of the spoon, and then I gotta connect the two. And I'm gonna use that bridge command to connect the two. But the back half is a little smaller. Or is it, Valen? Yeah, okay. But we do wanna dump, dip the dumpling in there. So um, I might just grab this and I'm gonna bring this one back in a little bit and push it down a little bit. There we go. And you have to, sometimes it's, um, you can't quite tell which arrow you're grabbing, so you gotta rotate a little bit so you make sure you're grabbing the right one. Um, and I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger just by double clicking that edge, select that center. And I can also just click on the center and then it says, it gives me one unit up there. And so this is basically, it's saying it's 100% right now. If I want it, let's say 110%, I would go one, one, oh. Whoops, not O. One, one, O. No, I would do 1.1. There we go. Okay, sorry. So that's a little bit bigger. Say okay. And now I'm going to bridge between these two, and I'm going to grab these four um, sides and these four. I could delete them, which would kind of give you an idea what's going to happen. But I don't actually have to, which is really cool. So I'm going to grab, shift, hold all those four down. And then I'm going to go up to my bridge command, uh, which is up there, bridge. Oops, I forgot. I, this, I always do this. You have to select bridge first and then select the, the... And here I don't have to hold shift. And if I pick two different objects, it automatically will figure out I want to go from one to the other. So this little arrow thing is showing me that um, the direction that the uh, the mesh is going to is going to go in, and it's pointing in the same direction. So this is good. It's not going to twist over itself every once in a while. Uh, if I click on that little arrow, I can move it to different places. Um, I just want them pointing in the same direction. It doesn't matter which quadrant they're in. They're just pointing in the same direction. And then um, I usually uh, like two faces in between because then it gives me one edge to mess with. So let's do this. And everything looks good. And I'm going to say, OK. All right, so now bridge between those. It made a top on this just because it wanted to. And I don't need that, so I'm just going to click those four quadrants and delete them. And now I've got my kind of little, more or less, my bottom of the peanut shape. But you can see from the side view uh, on the model that I'm holding here that you can't see in the video, <laughs> um, that it, it arcs up in the center. So I've got this one central line. And I'm going to double click on that. And then I'm going to go up to my um, soft modification and edit form again. And this will give me a little bit of a fall off. And so I can pull this center part up. And, and then I'm going to go back and grab um, the left and right. But actually, before I do that, um, I'm working with symmetry. So I'm going to give it some symmetry. So if I click on the little symmetry thing, I could say mirror internal in this case, because I want to pick two uh, internal to an object that's existing already. And so this little green line says that everything on, I do on one side will appear on the other side. So now I can, instead of grabbing both sides, I can just grab one piece and, for example, pull this up and you see it does it on both sides. And that's too much. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to try soft modification. And you can adjust the amount of uh, the distance. You can see the red uh, kind of fall off. And that looks like kind of what I want. So I'm going to make this center go up a little bit more because this is where you grab the spoon. And maybe I'll grab these either side of this. And in this case, I'm going to turn off the soft modification and just deal with 
directly. I'm just going to pull this up until it looks smooth. So it's purely visual. Because I want to, like you can see here, I've got this little dip in there. That does not look smooth, right? And if I go down too low, I get a little bit of a kind of a too much of a point. And so if I just visually do this to where it looks like this line is just a rolling spline, then that's good. So it kind of looks like a bottom of a shoe almost. And now last thing I got to do is um, give it some thickness. So I'm going to double click on the whole thing and say modify thicken. And here I do need some idea of units. I can drag this little arrow over here, but uh, I'm going to say just from looking at this, maybe 0 0.3. Let's try 0 0.3. And, and then this is going to, if I go negative 0.3, it's going to go inside. 0.3 is going to go outside. My dumpling fits on the inside of this, so I need to go outside. So positive 3 is making this uh, go to the outside. And I can, this little kind of square mesh that it's giving you as a preview, it looks a little thick. So maybe I'm gonna go back and say 0.2 instead. And then there's there's one more choice that's kind of interesting. I, this little thicken type, it says sharp edge or soft edge. I'm gonna do a soft edge and say okay. Uh, the other, uh, no edge will just give you two floating surfaces that are not connected. But see how this actually, fix the edge for us too. So now this is a 3D printable object already. And, um, but the thing is I wanna make sure that the form is right before I thicken it because now if I go, you know what, I wanna pull the, now I look at the top view and I wanna pull this center in a little bit. I can grab this whole loop and manipulate it but the thickness is gonna start changing in there. I probably could get away with a little bit of smushing. Uh, but I should I should get it perfect and then thicken it as the last command. Uh, let's go and do soft modification. I'm gonna go a little bit more because I want some like little finger dips. And I, I kind of like the peanut shape, although yours is not really that much, right? So maybe we'll back off a little bit. Oop. All right, and then I'm gonna turn that dumpling back on. So we can see what it looks like in the spoon. Ooh, ah. And then now let's, let's give it some materials. And so uh, they move where the materials are, but uh, if you think of this modify command, we're modifying this um, appearance of this. And so my options will pull up and let's see. I'm gonna actually, um, I had an idea to choose a wax material for the dumpling because it's got some translucencies to it. And that is somewhere in here. I think it's under miscellaneous. Yeah. It might be. Um, let me try other too. Water. Ooh. Rubber. Environment. Emissive makes it uh, light up which we don't need, but um, it's kind of cool. Uh, I'm gonna um, first actually just do the, the spoon, and this is where like, you just start experimenting. We don't know exactly what material yet, but I'm gonna choose some uh, blue glass to start with and just see what that looks like. And, and you have to, it's kind of, this little hierarchy thing doesn't work all the time. Sometimes you double click on these and they won't open. Um, but leather and cloth liquid, where was plastic? Plastic, let's try that. Hmm. No, paint, I forgot where, it... stone, wood. Actually, let's um, go back here. There's these cool Solid wood, come on, open. Finished painted stained. So the solid wood ones are actually will give you the grain and the proper uh, orientation going through the object, which is really crazy. So let's try 3D mahogany. So I gotta download that first. Yeah, so now I'll drop this on here. 
All right, and then the um, you can see the grain is going one direction. We'll change it if we want to, but um, but it actually gives you a pretty accurate view of what it would look like, how the grain would be chopped up over this 3D object. So I still need my dumpling color. I can't remember where it was buried. Let's try other. Oh boy, you're so smart. <laughs> Thought it was there. Like I said, it, okay, so here we go. Natural wax. I think this will give it a nice kind of soft translucency and yet uh, be about the right color. Now I could change this. If I double if I go back, so up on the top row is all the items I've used, including ones that I tried and I'm not using currently. But if I double click on this, I can go back and change the color and it's a little wider than this. So I'll go lighten that up a little bit. Um, the roughness is how shiny it is. And so I'm gonna maybe give it a little bit more roughness because it's not really too shiny. Um, and the translucency depth is how kind of uh, how see-through it is. So we'll turn that up a little bit and just say done. And I'll close this and let's go and render this and see what it looks like. So now I'm going to change from my design environment to my render environment. <clears throat> and you can see the shadow is going off to, um, let's, let's first get the angle how I want this, yeah, maybe something like this. But the shadow is going kind of right towards me, so this might not make a great rendering. Uh, so I'm going to go into the setup, which is this one over here, and um, let's actually use the environment because it looks it looks a little more natural. Let's uh, try. I like warm light; it's kind of nice. And then I got to go back to the settings, and then uh, this is kind of like Keyshot, but not quite. Um, so I'm going to, oops, I can choose a color background if I want, or I could choose the environment itself. So I'm going to do that, and you can't quite see it yet because I'm not rotated down, but now you can kind of see if I rotate around the actual studio setup. Wait, what? It's kind of making a fake 360 degree environment. No, it looks like this, it's, it's funny. All right, let, let's see what this does. All right, so now I gotta go. There's, um, Fusion's got these two options for rendering. I can do in canvas render, which will use my local computer to render. And, and notice that dumpling, look at how weird the color is, but it'll slowly calm down. But that translucency uses a lot of time because it's gotta, it's got to figure out the depth of it. So um, if you're just doing quick renders at first, you might try uh, just a solid material and they'll go quicker. Um, surprisingly reflective metallic ones go really quick. I would think that would take a lot to figure out the reflections, but it's not. It's the translucent ones or the emissive ones. Um, so this might take a while to render up. I can also go over to this little teapot render and click on that and then use my crowd credit credits and it will render in their farm and really quick, but you use up, you pay for it basically. And I think it, your account comes with some crowd, crowd cloud credits, but uh, you could buy more, uh, like I said, I just usually set it up on my own computer. Uh, so it's going, it, it might take a while. You can see the little progress bar down on the bottom right. The little blue piece is what's done. And it's going to go up to this little arrow that says excellent. And you can kind of gauge that, you know, this might take another couple, maybe five minutes or ten minutes to get to that excellent stage. And I can also slide this arrow up and make it better if I were going to go have lunch or something. Rather, I usually slide it up and just let it render longer. Um, and you can see that dumpling is starting to kind of look a little bit less weird, um, but you could also see the wood has some really nice texture going on in there. 
And let's try something just for curiosity's sake. I'm going to close this. And I'm going to turn off the dumpling, which I think is one. And see if that goes faster. Not much. Maybe the 3D wood texture takes uh, time, too. So I'm going to stop this just because um, we don't want to use up this whole thing rendering it. So um, if I go back to this um, little icon that shows a little uh, red dot on it, means I can stop rendering. So I could stop this now. Um, let me do one more thing here because the wood texture may not be going in the right grain. And so I'm going to go to this weird little triangle texture map control. And it says, what do you want to change the... So I click on this, and then it says uh, it, that I've chosen a 3D texture. What axis do I want it to be on? So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to choose this blue axis instead. And now this is uh, like end grain, so uh, you can see it's spiraling up from the bottom. And maybe, maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want it, I kind of liked where it was, but let's try this axis. That's what we think we had. And so let's try that axis. And that's kind of interesting. It's got some interesting stripes on there. So the, the, the nice thing is you can do all this experimenting super quick before you actually get into your real materials. Um, so let's go back to design. And I'm still in form. And I'm going to do one more thing because, uh, Valen, you have four of these things that spiral around, right? So I've got one already. So let's let's just quickly see if we can. Um, uh, do, 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 do. And the, the thing is, is these four have to um, fit nicely into another shape. And so I might make that shape and subtract these from it. Um, but I'm, I think I'm going to try something tricky. I don't know if this is going to work, but let's give it a shot. Uh, I'm going to do kind of like I did where I grabbed a piece of this and then moved it over for the other piece. I'm going to turn off the dumpling for now. And I'm going to grab the whole bottom of the spoon. So here I'm going to use that. Uh, and the, the texture of this wood is a little bit dark, so it's hard to see my lines. So a lot of times when I'm working, I'll go back and change my appearance to something. I actually like metallic finishes because they, um, well, they show you the form a little bit better. So let's go to metal. Okay, sorry, I'm just closing those. There we go. And I don't know why I always like the aluminum ones. Are so they they give you a kind of good, nice reflection, and you can really help. Oh yeah, no, Chicago. And then I could still see my um, my lines too, so I'll close this. Sometimes it takes a minute for the the mesh to come back up. 